Welcome to the introductory lecture of the course VLSI Design, Verification and Test. So today is the introduction of the first lecture. So as we said, VLSI design today is conducted through a set of very sophisticated computer aided design verification and testing tools. These tools take the design from a very initial and abstract idea of the functionality or behavior that we have in our mind. This can be an initial idea, non-formalized and hazy one. And then we have we first formally specify this idea in the form of uh, say a flow graph or uh, in, a, in a hardware description language and then progressively take it down to a completely structural implementation in the form of a package chip. This is done through a very streamlined step-by-step -step manner. So the design process has evolved through years of research and uh, it has today uh, become almost a science. So the objective of this course is to explain the fundamental algorithms and data structures that empowers these tools. So just a disclaimer at the beginning of the course that design being a creative activity can perhaps never be mechanized. Means you cannot exp uh, expect that you will have a push button and uh, from the initial design and you will get the final package chip. Human ingenuity will of course be required at each step of the design to understand how the different aspects of the design can be optimized to, to get what we want to achieve through the design. So uh, why computer aided design? So we were talking that today's VLSI design verification and test is done through computer aided tools. So why computer aided design? The First answer is modern designs are too complex to be developed manually. In the 1960s, we had integrated a few hundred maybe uh, device components on, on a substrate on the VLSI chip. And, uh, and we have come today where there are multi-million gates per chip on per substrate. And uh, with that, we have a diminishing cost of transistor, per transistor cost has diminished drastically over the years. So therefore, uh, on one side, uh, because the number of transistors per chip has increased, we have been able to integrate more and more functionalities into the same design, into on the, on the same substrate. And hence, the design has gone from simple to very, very complex and is almost impossible to be done only or fully by hand. On the other hand, this diminishing cost per chip per transistor has uh, made it possible to devise uh, hardware circuits, to make hardware circuits for possibly everything. So for today we have uh, wearable devices, embedded devices to IOTs and all these are in essence uh, embedded, embedded systems which are uh, integrated into a chip. So therefore, uh, the, designer's, the, the designer's salary and uh, the time to market has become very important here, right? So to save such designer salaries, time to market, we need automated systems, automated um, uh, algorithms, which will take the design from the initial inception to the final package chip, hence CAD. The second important reason is that VLSI circuits are almost impossible to, uh, to, to be repaired after the design, after it is designed. It is in hardware, right? So it cannot be repaired afterwards. So therefore there is a need to design almost zero defect designs. We need to create almost zero defect designs. And hence it has to be done through automated tools because humans are prone to errors. There has been a larger and larger efforts. The third important reason is that we are trying to consolidate today many functionalities on a single chip. And we are progressively moving towards what is called system on chip so that everything will be integrated into one chip. Uh, why, is this, um, why is this happening? Because it reduces the number of components 
purchase, it reduces the number of components, uh, so the number of different chips that you require. It enhances performance faster chips because uh, interconnection between chips or inter-chip intercommunication communication will be all, always slower than intra-chip communication. This also reduces design cost in packaging and interconnection because you are, you are now packaging many things into a single chip and it also improves reliability because now always interconnections introduce errors in between. If you see uh, today, uh, uh, this, this, if you see as an example this trend towards SOCs, we can take the example of a mobile phone say, today's mobile phones have processors within them, obviously a mobile phone will require a processor and will most probably be a reduced instruction set architecture risk processor, but along with that it may need specialized DSPs, digital signal processors for say voice and image data. Um, and special instruction set catering to signal processing, other different types of signal processing. It will have RF circuits, radio frequency circuits. Uh, the mobile device should be able to communicate to the out outside world, so it will require RF circuits. It will require analog components, so communication is, is uh, uh, basically an analog aspect, so therefore it will require analog components, uh, digital to analog converters, analog to digital converters, all within the same chip but it may require custom digital units. Uh, for example, if you need to do um, high performance encryption, decryption of image data, you may need to design an ASIC within the chip. So ASIC meaning application specific integrated circuits. So we should understand there is a certain difference of these ASICs with ASICs, which are application specific instructions and processors. The subtle difference being that although ASICs can have controllers within it, it will not include programmability. Programmability will only be an aspect of ASICs and not ASICs. Okay, so it can also have uh, MEMS or microelectronic sensors because it, it will have different types of sensors, so pressure sensors, temperature sensors, proximity sensors, etc. So therefore, we see today that in our mobile phones today the same chip in, uh, includes uh, a lot of functionality together and will, may be regarded as a system on chip. And such system on chip, there is a proliferation of such system on chips today. And hence many functionalities are being included, such designs are very complex and we need computer aided design for that. <coughs> also CAD provides a sy systematic step by step design procedure as we said. So it will take progressively take the design from one step to the next until uh, the final chip is uh, final, final chip is produced, uh, and hence uh, there is a necessity of CAD here. Also, higher integration, as we said, many transistors within a chip, higher integration uh, will lead to huge power dissipation because all these transistors within the chip, each of them will 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 leak power and hence there will be huge leakage power and um, correspondingly we will have hot, hot spots generated within the chip and the, the heat today can be close to the heat that is generated in with today's frequency at which these chips operate and with the number of components in the chip it could be that almost compared to a rocket nozzle and hence people have devised ways, design methodologies by which the, the designs will be aware of the power consumed and the hot spot, uh, and the hot spots and the design will be optimized accordingly. So there is a focus towards low power design strategies at each stage of the design. There is an increasing trend towards fault tolerant designs as well. So today we have, uh, today we have safety critical embedded devices, for example wearable health, um, healthcare devices. And manufacturing these chips with very specified levels of reliability is extremely essential. For example, if we take uh, the example of um, uh, a pacemaker, say today, it 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 uh, must be it must uh, say um, it must be able to to respond to, uh, to very quickly with respect to uh, um, uh, um, say a missing heartbeat. So therefore, performance is extremely essential 
in the design of uh, this uh, pacemaker. With that, uh, this pacemaker will be placed where? Inside the heart. So therefore, uh, it has to be small in area. So we understand that when, when we try to increase uh, performance, we need to parallelly do many things. And doing things parallelly means we need higher area of doing that. However, a pacemaker cannot consume a lot of area as well. It has to be low in area because it has to be placed within the heart. It has to consume low power. Why? The reason is that it has to run for years together within the heart. So therefore, it cannot consume a lot of power. So therefore, it has to be power efficient. It has to efficiently utilize the battery's power. It has to be fault tolerant, obviously. Um, um, it, cannot, um, it cannot suffer a fault being placed within the heart. So therefore, it has to be highly reliable. And hence, high reliability also, also means that these chips need to be easily verifiable, easily testable, and most importantly, last but not the least, it has to be low in cost so that it becomes affordable to the community. So, what we are trying to say is that today's devices will require a whole lot of design optimizations to achieve at the final product. And for such complex designs, computer aided design is extremely essential. And so, what we understand is that, therefore, we understand that at each stage of the design, we have different alternatives of the design, right? We can, we can be very efficient on area, we can lack on performance, uh, all these things. And it gives us a very big design space, which means that there are many possible solutions, uh, possi many possible solutions within the given total space within which the solution can lie. And finding an optimal solution from this enormous set of feasible implementation choices all, um, almost always will require computer aided design. It cannot be done by hand. And hence computer aided design. Thus with a basic understanding why computer aided design is required, we come to the end of module one of this lecture.